the Africa you dream of. This is the Africa I dream of. I'm Kristen Kenny, a broadcast journalist who found myself across the world in Tanzania, Africa, with my best friend Venance, to film a documentary on global peace. We scaled Kilimanjaro, saw the Serengeti, and soaked up village life. You might think me, being from America, I'm safe from disease. But along the way, I was exposed to one of Africa's biggest killers, malaria. So why won't they see me? What? They don't want? They're full. So what? They're so full, Chris. I need a doctor now. Really? I had malaria, and I had severe malaria. My body just felt like it was collapsing, and the pain was unbearable. What are we doing? What's the talk? Let's just go. I had a severe fever, my teeth were chattering, and my joints felt like they were being twisted, and it's, it's really, really painful. I remember going to one clinic, and they were full, and I'm sitting down in one clinic like, help me, please, I feel like I'm dying, and, and they're like, we're full. And at that moment, I'm like, wow, this is, I'm really alone, and I'm, this is reality in Tanzania. This is what they live and experience every single day. When I contracted malaria, I became just like every other Tanzanian. I was alone in a hospital bed, wondering if I would make it out alive. The only difference is that I had money to be able to pay the small amount to, to save my life, to get the life-saving medication, seven dollars. Four days I was in that hospital. No soap, no water, no electricity, but I was lucky to be alive. Mama Koku was with her two twins when she learned they had malaria. She walked from Kenya, 12 miles away with her babies on her back. By the time she arrived at Kalema Hospital, her son had died. See, although uncomfortable, I was lucky because I had the advantage of taking a bus. It took six hours, it was cramped, hot, it cost me $2. But by the time I arrived at the hospital, I learned the complications of malaria in Africa. In our place now, we see that malaria is now killing more people than the HIV, especially for the under fives. And the under fives, they die more than the others because the immunity is low. Malaria kills more children than any disease in sub-Saharan Africa, 800,000 a year. That's roughly the entire population of our nation's capital, wiped out just like that. And it's entirely preventable through bed nets and medication. So this one-year-old no longer has her brother and mama no longer has her son because of malaria is something that's preventable and treatable. So does this put it into perspective? I didn't understand what malaria was or what it did before this moment. And when I left, I realized something had to be done. I said, I'm going to get back to America and find a way that we can raise funds for people who have malaria so that they can live and get them the life-saving medication. And right when I stepped foot back in America, that was my focus and that's been my commitment ever since. <laughs> Malaika for Life was created. Malaika means angel to the people of Tanzania. And we are essentially a network of angels fighting malaria, fighting for a better life, one bracelet at a time. This simple bracelet, handmade by the women of Tanzania, not only empowers the women we work with, but also provides life-saving medicine that has treated over 20,000 malaria patients. The action is simple. Buy a bracelet, save a life. We're a year later back in Tanzania, this time with all of our friends from America and yeah. Father Alois, yes. who is helping us tremendously on the yeah. ground. Yeah. Today we are going to the pharmacy in Arusha where we purchased the malaria medication. Right, Father Alois? Yes, with we are going to be with the one nun, a pharmacist. We are going to bring the money that we've raised, a portion of it today, yeah. to see how much medication we can buy. And then tomorrow we're going to be in Haruma Hospital yeah. to see the impact that the yeah. medication has on the people. Yeah. 
I'm not a doctor, so I need to make sure the nurse tells us what's the best for the people. <laughs> So this will treat all cases of malaria, yeah. severe malaria, chronic malaria, or just yeah. the basic falciparum. This cannot be resistant it's because not, oh. of the two combination of artemisin and piperaquine. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Almost four hundred. Almost four hundred dollars. Okay. <laughs> so a dollar a life. This is shocking. 393 children this will treat. And it cost us almost $400. That's a dollar a life. I mean... My great expectation that my life is for life is not going to end all, only in Rombo district. We'll extend also to other parts of our diocese. Father Aloy's being here with us, it just really solidifies everything we're doing and it makes me have so much more confidence. Mm -hmm. That's and a I lot say. of the worries about working in such a difficult country and, you know, gaining the trust of the people. I mean, that just, just meeting him alone would have been enough for the trip. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Not feeling You feeling good? Yeah. How long have you been here? How long have you been in the hospital? Three days mm -hmm. from Saturday. I had that. Last year I was in here three days. Yes. Like, just like that. Yes. You're a nurse. But you you got the medicine for free. But if you were not Hapana free, would you have been able to pay for it? Not be able. Not be able. Because I'm an orphan and I'm a dead employed. It just hit me because uh, everyone needs it. Even the people who have jobs that you think are taken care of. You, the real picture is that they need it. I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna check on you, make sure you're okay. It's not just the poorest of the poor who need this medicine, it's everybody in this community. Doctors here who make less than $300 a year, who have to take care of five children and survive on less than a dollar a day when you do the math, it's, it's just more to the, the story. I am reminded of my near-death experience and of the importance of this medicine. It's life-saving as shown in the story of Koku. It's moments like this where it hits you. All they need are the essentials, the basics, and for a small amount, they can survive. <laughs>